straight walled cartridges. So many questions, so much confusion. We hope to straighten it out and get all the answers today on Ron Spomer Outdoors. So what is up with all of these new straight walled cartridges? Why do we need them? What's uh, the purpose? Didn't we have them back in the 1800s? Why are we going backwards? Well, there's a lot of reasons that we're going to cover all of it today. Plus, what are the best ones? How do they all compare ballistically against one another? Which one shoots the furthest and the flattest? Which one shoots with the most energy on target? Which one has the heavier bullets? Which one drifts the least in the wind? Which one has maximum point blank range? Which one has more recoil? There's a lot to consider when you're selecting a straight walled cartridge. But let's start with the easy ones. What is a straight walled cartridge? I think it's pretty obvious. The walls are straight. That doesn't mean they don't have any taper. They all have to have a little bit of taper because that eases them coming out of the chamber after they fired and expanded. So they're not going to be the same diameter at one end as they are at the base. A little bit of taper, but they don't have the bottleneck. This quick little taper at the shoulder you see on this 3030, or even a little bit on this 35 Remington. That is a classic bottleneck case. Now, why would we have one over the other? Well, back in the old days, everything was straight walled and it harks back to the muzzle loaders. You poured powder down the barrel, and then you seeded a bullet over it, and it was all the same diameter all the way through. So when they started making brass cases and putting them in the breech of the barrel, they just made it the same diameter, put the bullet on it, and there was your system. And that worked for quite a while to someone tumbled to the idea of necking that thing down, putting a smaller diameter bullet on it, and increasing the velocity because you had less weight to push with the same amount of powder. And then things started improving for ballistic performance. Then when they put smokeless powder in it, whoo, we were on our way. So over the 20th century, we pretty much worked on making bullets go faster with bottleneck cartridges with lots of powder and neck down and all this good fun stuff. So why now are we going back to the cowboy days, the black powder days, and straight wall cartridges for deer hunting? Why does something like the 350 Legend, the 460 Buck Hammer, the 400 Legend, and the 450 Bushmaster, why are those popping up? Mostly because there are some states that regulate what you can and cannot use in your rifle for hunting deer. These were traditionally shotgun states. Now, the idea with a shotgun only hunting state was that there was such a density of population that they didn't want firearms sending bullets a long, long way. I mean, when they found out that uh, modern bottleneck cartridges like a 30 6 could easily shoot miles, they didn't want these bullets flying around and hitting cows and horses and barns and people. So they said, hey, let's just make it shotguns only. You get close to your deer, you don't get one at all. Whether or not there's any validity to that, I don't know. I have never found statistics indicating that people walking around were suddenly getting hit by bullets fired by hunters during deer season. Um, in most states, you might see one to three fatalities during the deer hunting season from firearms accidents. And that's usually coming out of a vehicle or getting back in or in a blind situation, not a long range thing. But it does happen and I can see the concern and that's why some states decided they're going shotgun only, minimum range. Well, then they started opening that up because a lot of rifle people will say, these rifle cartridges, some of them don't shoot any farther than the 12 gauge. So uh, 12 gauge slug or a 45 70, what's the difference? So they looked at it, thought, okay, we can allow some straight walls because they cannot go as fast as the bottleneck cartridges. That's why we have them. Illinois, Ohio, Southern Michigan, several states like that have these laws where you have to use straight wall cartridge. And some of them also say you've got to have a certain caliber. And it's usually 35 at the bottom, 45 at the top. And then some of them will also say that the case itself cannot be longer than 1.8 inches. So that really limits what's available. You look at the old cowboy rounds and most of them are longer than that. 4570 is over two inches. The 450 Marlin, that's pretty new actually, but that one's uh, just as long. And gosh, you get into some of the ones like a 405 Winchester and the 458 Magnum. I mean, that's a new mid 20th century 
um, <laughs> it's a straight wall cartridge, but it's way more powerful than they were probably thinking. So that's why they put the length restrictions on it. And these things are going to fly way too far. Now, the other option, of course, are your handgun cartridges. And a lot of states started allowing those. So you got your 357 Magnum kind of at the bottom. And then the 44 Magnum grew popular, 454 Casul. Now the 460 Smith & Wesson, really powerful and fast. 500 Smith & Wesson, 500 Action Express. There's a lot of different cartridges that would fit in the revolver world. And some guys will put those into rifle barrels for more velocity because of the extra barrel length, et cetera, et cetera. But if there's, they're already out there, why are we getting these new ones? Well, it's because people want to optimize the reach, the potential, the performance of their straight-walled cartridge. And they're not satisfied with these short pistol rounds. And we're going to see numbers as we progress here that will show exactly why this can and cannot happen. And uh, I have got a list of straight-walled cartridges here that totals over 19. And about 10 of those are legal in these limited length straight wall states. So we're going to look at all the numbers on those. And we're going to compare those to the well-known 3030 Winchester and 35 Remington. Because a lot of people watching my videos, when I cover a straight wall cartridge, like the 350 Legend or the 400 uh, Legend, will say, well, what's, what's wrong with the 35 Remington or the 3030? And how do these compare to it? Well, obviously, you can't use the bottleneck cartridges, so you do have to find one that will match or come close to the performance of these two. So I think these two are a great benchmark. If you know what a 3030 is capable of, knowing that these other straight walls right here can come close to that or maybe even exceed that performance gives you pretty good confidence in buying one for your deer hunting or even black bear hunting. And a lot of guys are having great luck with these in feral pig hunting. So they're becoming quite darn popular. And a lot of them have limited recoil. And that's really nice. We're going to look at all of that stuff in this episode and find out just how these different cartridges compare and help you figure out which one you might want to get for your straight-walled hunting. Now, before this is all over, we're going to find out which one does shoot the flattest and the farthest, which one puts the most energy downrange on target, which one deflects the least in the wind, which one recoils the least, and which one recoils the most. All of this information to help you decide which is going to work for you. Now, let's start with some basic numbers on our benchmark cartridges, 3030 Winchester and the 35 Remington. And know this, when we're looking at all of these numbers, you do need to consider the different bullets that are used. I could not include every bullet in every one of these cartridges on this list. It would just take up... Too, much, too many pages, too much time. And some of these bullets are going to have a higher ballistics coefficient than the others. And some of them are a little bit unfair in that regard because you can get some fairly pointed, sharp-tipped bullets uh, as opposed to the round nose bullets. So do consider that when you are looking at this. Give, gives us a benchmark and then do further research when you're actually looking at what you're going to be shooting. So the 3030 170 grain bullet there you are in numbers. You got your muzzle velocity, 2,150 feet per second. Pretty standard out of a 20-inch barrel on your lever action rifles. And that's kind of the standard we all understand for whitetail hunting. And that ends up with about a 201-yard maximum point blank range. That means you aim at a 6-inch target dead center. It won't go any more than 3 inches high. And when it drops 3 inches low, that's your maximum reach, which is really wonderful because you're deer hunting. You see a deer. How far is it? I don't know. There he goes. Get him quick before he moves. Bang. If he's inside of 200 yards, you've got him. You don't have to worry about compensating for drops. Maximum point blank range. Wonderful system. So look, both the 35 and the 3030 with the bullets I chose have the same maximum range. They're both putting out more than enough energy. 1,161 foot-pounds at 200 yards for the 35 Remington. 937 for the 3030. Close enough. No deer is going to shrug that one off, right? And then wind deflection. 10 mile an hour right angle wind. 200 yards, you're going to get the bullet out of this 3030 moving 8.4 inches off target, 7.2 inches off for the, uh, the big 35 Remington. Again, this is your benchmark. Now, a lot of guys get excited about wind deflection in the forest because there's not that much usually. It's not like you're out on the plains of Wyoming hunting pronghorn, but it's something to consider. Then recoil, 8-pound rifle on all these recoils, guys. 11.6 foot-pounds of energy out of the 3030, 15.7 out of the 35 Remington. There's your benchmarks. Now we're going to compare our straight walls against that. Now, the little 357 Magnum cartridge here, 
is fairly popular with handgun hunters for deer, and it works out to about 100 yards. And you can see why. It only starts out at 1,450 feet per second. It gives you 840 foot-pounds of energy. That's at the muzzle, guys. And you know, a lot of us will say for deer, you really ought to have 1,000 foot-pounds on target. And when you get up to 200 yards, you're down to 458 foot-pounds of energy which is why probably not a lot of deer are shot at 200 yards with a 357 Magnum handgun cartridge. So it's got a maximum point blank range of 140 yards. Uh, not much recoil, 4.2 pounds, foot pounds, that's nice. But boy, you got a lot of wind deflection too. So consider that a 50 to 100 yard option. And you can get to 357 maximum. A lot of guys say, why don't you cover that one? That one is a lengthened version of the 357. And that improves things fairly nicely. You get up to 162 yards, but you're still getting 11.4 inches of wind deflection. And your energy is still down at 600 foot pounds at 200 yards. So it's not a huge improvement. 44 Magnum. Most powerful handgun world, yeah, right. That one uh, is going to improve things for you a little bit. You got about the same wind deflection, 11.8 inches. Uh, the recoil is 11.1, nothing to sneeze at. 183 yards, maximum point blank range. But again, your energy at 200 yards is down to 815. I'm sure a whitetail is going to succumb to that, but it's not what we would consider optimal. And you're going to find that with almost all of your handgun cartridges, except for perhaps the four. 60 Smith & Wesson, maybe the 500. But the 500 is probably not legal in the states that have your limits at 45 caliber. That's a 50. The 460 is a 458, so you're going to be all right there. So you will look at the numbers on this chart. I'm going to put the chart up, uh, the whole thing at the end, so you can stop things and look. And if you don't want to do that, go to my website. I'm going to put this in a blog on all of the straight-walled cartridges and their ballistics performance. So the chart will be there, and you can just run down the line and make comparisons amongst all of these to make an informed decision about which one is going to work for you. Now, let's get um, up to the 4570, which is kind of the benchmark for a lot of guys. They so just go, wait, why don't you just use a 4570? Been around forever, lots of guns available. Well, it's too long for these 1.8 inch limit states. But still, it's nice to know what kind of performance you can expect from it. It's another benchmark. And with the 4570 government in the factory loads with 300 grain bullets that are loaded down because of the old trapdoor Springfield rifles, they don't have a lot of chamber pressure allowed in those. So it's fairly anemic. You can load these things hotter if you've got a modern lever action like the Marlin. And if you've got, say, a single shot like the. Um, Ruger number one, you can really push the pressure up on it and get some magnificent performance. But I did uh, the 4570 numbers here for the Marlin lever action. So that's going to be a little faster than you're going to get out of the uh, standard factory loads unless you specify something special. At any rate, 300 uh, grain bullet, it's going to deliver 1,312 foot pounds of energy at 200 yards. Great, more than enough power. And it's got a reasonable maximum point blank range of 191 yards. Not as good as the 3030 or the 35, but not bad. But look at the recoil price you pay 30.7 foot pounds of recoil energy in an eight pound rifle. Ouch, a lot of guys just don't like that. So they won't shoot it that well. So those are the things you want to consider about a big cartridge like that. 450 Marlin is even higher. Um, chamber pressures, so it's driving the same bullets a little bit faster. You're going to get better performance. You're going to reach all the way up to 227 yards for your maximum point blank range. That's really impressive. And you're carrying over 2,000 foot pounds of energy at 200 yards. So, really, you're looking at this 450 Marlin at reaching out there easily to 250 yards and with a little study and holdover, probably 300. But the recoil, 44 foot pounds of energy. Yikes. And that's, of course, going to get worse as you go up the scale with the 405 Winchester and the 458 Win Mag. I mean, that's a Cape Buffalo dangerous game round. And all these older, like the 500 Nitro Express here, look at that monster. You're not going to be using that for whitetail hunting. <laughs> well, you might, but you're a glutton for punishment if you do. So those are pretty much off the table for a lot of these limited states, whereas the shorter ones are filling the gap from the pistol rounds up to the too long. That's why you're seeing all these new straight wall cartridges pop up. 
There are so many hunters in states like Ohio and uh, Illinois and such where they've got these limitations that the manufacturers saw an opening to sell you more guns and ammunition. <laughs> That's why they're in business. So they created, I, I think it's a wonderful thing because they are helping us find the perfect ground for the style of hunting we're going to be doing in these states. So if you need one, this is what you want to consider. And I have shown those in my chart that we're going to put up in red. So look for the red ones and you're going to find the 350 Legend, the 360 Buckhammer, and the 400 Legend from Winchester. That's brand new. Plus the 450 Bushmaster, which was designed quite some time ago to function in AR-15 rifles. And it does surprisingly well. We're going to see it pop up here in some of the best of the best at the end of the program. Uh, you might be surprised at what it's capable of. But let's look at the numbers on the 350 Legend, 360 Buckhammer, and the 400 Legend and compare them to the 3030 with the 170 grain bullet. So the Buckhammer is putting out a lot of energy, 2,400 foot pounds, and it's going to carry, well, that was the velocity. It's 2,300 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle, and that hangs on to 969 at 200 yards. So again, 200-yard gun, and you look at the drops and the drifts, and it's telling you, and that's about right. It's got a maximum point-blank range of 209 yards. So your energy is petering out at about the same time your drops are getting a little bit down. Not too bad on your recoil in an 8-pound rifle at 14.7 foot-pounds. Uh, compare that to 11.6 and a 30-30. And the wind deflection is pretty reasonable at 10.8 inches. So figure around 11. Now look at the 350 Legend. And you're going to lose a little bit of energy at 200 yards, but not bad. It's carrying 809 foot-pounds, so it's not that far behind the uh, 360 Buckhammer. It's got a little bit less uh, wind deflection, so you have an advantage there. And a couple of pounds less foot-pounds energy recoil for you. So I can see why folks like the 350 Legend. It's coming awfully close to the performance of the 3030. In some categories, maybe a little better. Uh, with Pretty light recoil, right about the same. Those two are just running neck and neck, and it's got less recoil than the 360. Now jump down to the 400 Legend, and that one, it kind of splits the difference between these two. It falls right in between. You get a wider bullet for folks who like a little more diameter. You got a 40 caliber instead of a 35. Both of these are 35s, despite the, thir the 36, 360 Buckhammer number on this one. So if you like that, there's an advantage for you. And it does have an energy advantage at 200 yards, 1,134 foot-pounds. The uh, maximum point-blank range, 203 yards. So once again, it's just balancing out nicely as a 200-yard whitetail, black bear, feral pig rifle. Uh, got a little more energy and recoil on your shoulder, but I can't swear that this one is accurate. That's why I have a question mark after that 15, because I had to guess at the powder capacity and no reload data on this brand new cartridge. So I don't know how many um, grains of powder are put in there. I probably estimated a little bit more because given the weight of the bullet and the velocity and everything, I think this thing would be closer to about maybe 15 foot pounds of recoil, much more similar to the uh, 360 buck hammer, I think, than the number I gave. So don't hold me to that one. But that gives you an idea of how similar these three are, not only to one another, but to the 3030 and the 35 Remington. I don't think any deer is going to complain if you use any of these. I think they're all just really outstanding for woods hunting, um, any close range hunting up to 200 yards for deer sized animals. And I think they'll work beautifully on black bear. A lot of guys have been reporting excellent results with that 350 Legend on feral pigs. And the other two, I think, are just going to step up a little bit for you. So you should do just fine. Now, the good old Bushmaster. We're going to be surprised at some of its numbers. We're going to jump to those in just a little bit. But before I do, I want to address the 458 SOCOM. Because a lot of guys, when I do these reports on straight walls, will say, why don't you have that SOCOM in there instead of always talking about the Bushmaster? Simple reason. the SOCOM is a bottleneck cartridge. Not much of a shoulder on it, but it necks down just a little bit so it won't qualify in the states that require straight walls. Otherwise, yes, it is a little more potent cartridge than the uh, 450 Bushmaster. The Bushmaster shoots a 0.452 inch diameter bullet, whereas the 458 SOCOM has the genuine 0.458. It doesn't make any difference to me, but a lot of guys like that. They're, they think they've got a 
a better bullet selection for hand loading, and they probably do, but uh, no biggie. The numbers we're going to look at now on the 450 are fairly impressive. 450 Bushmaster, 250 grain bullet. Um, it's going at launch at 2,200 feet per second and carry 2,687 foot-pounds of energy out of the muzzle, and it keeps 1,274 out there at 200 yards. How did that match up? That's a little bit more than the 400 Legend, so pretty impressive. And you've got a 45 caliber bullet that's a little bit wider than your 40 caliber bullet, so you've got an advantage there. Uh, doesn't have quite the maximum point blank range. You're dropping off at 189 versus 203. So the, give it to the 400 Legend on maximum point blank range. Wind deflection, same with these two, 10 inches, identical there. And then you do have 22 foot pounds of recoil energy out of this one, which uh, again confirms what I was suspecting on the 400. I'm a little bit high on my 18. So. They're just, I think, really good compromise cartridges. I think the manufacturers have done a wonderful job of looking at what was already out there, what was legal and what wasn't legal, and what they could do to make a cartridge that would shoot well, match up with the given and known performance of the 3030 and the 35 Remington to give us an effective white tail cover cartridge that will be legal in these straight wall states and would still be wonderfully effective where you even don't need a straight walled state. I mean, if you don't like the idea of a super velocity bullet from your seven rim mag hunting in the woods of Maine or New York, you don't have to use it. Pick one of these up. If you prefer the old 3030 and you already have one or the 35, we'll stick with that. But we've got choices. And I really have to chuckle at the uh, readers who comment and say, oh gosh, another new round nobody needs. The ammo companies are just trying to sell us more products, take our money. Well. I'm just grateful that we've got firearms and ammunition manufacturers that are making products that I want to buy. I don't have to buy them. Nobody has to buy these things. I don't complain when they come out with new options. I just welcome them, study them, and reject them if I don't like them. Take them if I do. I like freedom of choice. So um, you can look at our list now. We'll put that up and take your time and study it because I think you're going to be surprised at what these little new cartridges can do and how they match up. And then if some of the bigger ones, if you want to go bigger, go home. <laughs> They're out there. But I think you might be surprised at what the ballistic performance of some of these big workhorses really is. I think you're going to think, well, you know, the 4570 is just like some kind of super all-American buffalo round. I mean, they use that to shoot bison back in the market hunting days for a while. It was pretty popular. So you figure that thing has got to be super powerful. But when you look at the numbers, it really doesn't stand up all that well. The 450 Marlin, kind of an improved version of it with a um, belted case so that you can't put it into a 4570 and blow it up because they got much higher pressures on that one. That one is pretty impressive. Um, and there are a lot more like it, 405 Winchester, 375 Winchester, 3855, a lot of old cowboy rounds out there, or, and not even cowboy rounds at 375 Winchester. They came out, gosh, in the 1980s, I believe, or the late 70s, trying to improve the performance of the lever action uh, annual eject big bore rifles that Winchester came out with. Just didn't do very well, um, but it certainly got uh, potential. So consider all of those things, uh, I think, you will, like I did when I was researching all of this stuff, discover some new things, learn some new things, and get some new perspectives on straight wall cartridges and how effective they really are. Um, I hope this has given you some good information that you can use to select your next straight wall round if you need one or if you want one. Now, we've got some winners and losers here on the best of the everything categories. So I want to talk about the um, flattest shooting, the hardest hitting, and all that good stuff. Out of all the ones on my list here, 19 different straight wall cartridges, the one that develops the most muzzle energy is drum roll, 450 Bushmaster. <laughs> That's our winner for most muzzle energy with the bullet I use. Do, do remember that, guys. You can change the bullet weights and shapes and stuff and come up with different numbers. Um, which one carries the most energy at 200 yards? Is it a high speed or a high ballistics coefficient bullet like this one on the 350 Legend? No, it's the 450 Bushmaster. But that is with the sharply tipped bullet too. 
Fastest muzzle velocity belongs to the 360 Buckmaster, 2,400 feet per second. Uh, the, the flattest shooting, however, is the 400 Legend. That one's a little bit flatter, out to 200 yards. The least wind deflection was given to, uh, oh, I thought one's a tie. 400 Legend and the 450 Bushmaster, 10 inches of deflection in the 10 mile an hour wind. Pretty nice. The most recoil, I haven't. I don't have the cartridge up here. It's a handgun cartridge, and it's the 500 Smith & Wesson shooting. Gosh, what was I shooting? A 500-grain bullet on that one? 300-grain bullet. 300-grain bullet generates 28.6 foot-pounds of energy. So if you don't like recoil, you're probably not going to want the 500 Smith & Wesson cartridge. And the one with the least recoil, 10-millimeter auto. That is a 40 caliber bullet. Obviously, it's in a pretty small little case, but it pretty much produces or matches the ballistics of the 357 Magnum. So uh, there you go in your handgun cartridges. So that's the, the data I pulled up on the straight walls, guys. I hope you've enjoyed all this. I think you can uh, refer back to this anytime you're doing some research on straight walls and you want to know exactly what they're capable of doing. Um, go to the website. Again, as I said, I'll put that blog up with these charts and all of the ballistics on there so you can take your time and study and compare and make an informed decision on the best straight walled cartridge for you and your brand of hunting. See you next time. Hunt honest and shoot straight.